Hi, welcome to While Away With Us. I'm Eric. And I'm Wendy Verdue. We spent a year traveling Europe and we've gotten so many questions about our trip that we thought we would do a series of videos answering those questions. We hope you like it. If you do, please click on like, feel free to subscribe, and leave a comment below if we didn't answer your question. Well, let's get on to the questions. What country did you like best and why? When do you want to go first? Um, so I'm really torn about this. I think, I don't know, it honestly, it just depends on the day. It's kind of like your favorite song. So sometime I would say Italy. I love Italy. I loved it when we went in 2016 and, and three months there did not change that. Um, but Spain, Spain, I love Spain. Right now today, I think Spain may be a, a bit above Italy. And the reasons for that are because of the relationships we made there, the people we met, and the fact that Eric has some incredible family there because his grandparents are from Spain. He still has relatives that live there. We met them, they're lovely people. And you know, they, they were so open and warm with us and it really yeah. it made a great impact on you know <laughs> how I feel about Spain I, I really care for it so for me it it, it is Spain um, and, and the wonderful family that I got to meet for the first time but not just for my family I loved Spain for all the varieties of cities Valencia is probably my favorite city because it's cosmopolitan but I'm from Pittsburgh, not a small city, but uh, the big cities make me nervous. My, my radar is always on alert in American cities for, for problems gonna come up. And I've, I've never had one, but, but that's just my nature. In Valencia, we never had that feeling of a threat or anything even to be uh, uh, concerned about. And yet you had all your museums, you had your world-class science centers, the beach, is right there. Valencia oranges. <laughs> exactly. And the people were nice. Yeah. Uh, and then we went, uh, Spain has fantastic rail and bus systems. And you know, their high speed trains go 250 miles an hour uh, from one point to another. And so it's easy to get around if you've got a, some money. I agree with Wendy. Italy though, I mean, one of the reasons we went back to Europe was because of our trip to Bologna, Italy. And originally, long before, not long, but before Prague, before Spain, we contemplated what would it be like to live in Bologna? Yeah. I mean, it was just so uh, uh, charming and, and charismatic of a city. Uh, even though we didn't really know the people, you know, occasionally a server at a restaurant would be friendly, uh, speak English with us. But um, yeah, but that was the beginning of the thought, where could we live? And when we went to Italy, we stayed in one town for a month, and it was and it wasn't a tourist town. This was a blue collar working class city, but the nice thing was it was on the Adriatic, so you could literally walk from our place through the woods. There's the coast. They had bike paths everywhere, a vibrant downtown where all the workers would go out there and sit out in the cafes. Um, so that's. Like Wendy, I would say, you know, if, if Spain were not possible, definitely that town in Italy. Not, not Pescara. Bologna, but Pescara, Italy. Yeah. Great place. What kind of budget did you have for the trip and how well did you stick to it? Hey, that was all, that was Wendy's planning. She made this whole <laughs> thing possible. Now, she told you she's retired. I left the career and as, as we've gone from place to place, the type of work I do is really no longer uh, uh, available to me. And so I've just picked up odd jobs, minimum wage jobs. So we knew we had a very limited budget, uh, just basically on Wendy's retirement. So well, how'd you plan this? So our budget was, we, we saved from Eric um, Eric's job before we left enough to buy our plane tickets to Europe and back home. So we didn't have to worry about that. That got us there and it got us back. 
um, and I want to say that was about six thousand dollars that we put towards our travel there and back. We didn't use all that. Our tickets were less expensive, but um, we had a little bit of a cushion there as well. But the budget that we lived off of daily was my retirement income. Um, to give you an idea, we planned for um, a $600 a month Airbnb stay. If you stay a month in Airbnbs, they give you, not all, all of them, but a lot of Airbnbs will give you really deep discounts, sometimes up to 80% off. So um, that really, <laughs> that was really the whole reason that this was possible, quite honestly. In our budget, well, I say 600, it was between six and 700 in, in reality, though some months we actually did stay for less than 600. We did manage to stay within our budget um, everywhere but Spain, and I'll tell you why. Um, we did some workaways. We had to for England. It was England was very, very expensive. So there was no way we were going to be able to stay for three months. The Airbnbs, even for a month's stay, was like $1,600, $1,800. So what we decided to do was to pay for one month. Six times three is $1,800. So we figured, okay, we'll put all the budget for three months into one. But for two months, we're not going to be able to pay. We'll do work away. So we did that and we worked at the thatched cottage in Brockenhurst, England. Um, and it's on the very southern end of England. And that afforded us our stay there. Well, we liked the idea of work away so much that we thought, let's do the same thing in Spain or actually the rest of our trip. Um, and we didn't need it, but it was a way to, you know, to interact with people and, and to have this, this, and this is before we left the I States. I was going to say, we made this the decision. idea <laughs> of work away sounded wonderful. And, and when Wendy told me about it, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be the opportunity to live with people who are there and to, to become culturally to really rich. feel like a local. And, and we'll save money too, because <laughs> they're paying for our room and board. And, and we only have to work for them a few times and then we can go off and do what we want. Like Wendy said, the idea of work away was wonderful. And actually we had great experiences with work away and we'll talk about that. I don't think it's a question, but um, we'll it's too be It's too important sure as part to, of the budget, not yeah, to mention. To talk about that more. But the problem was, as I said, to stay at Airbnbs, you have to stay a month to get that deep discount. So the way we did it, we before we left the States, we looked up these places in Spain to do work away. Um, and we just took whoever accepted us, more or less. And um, they were scattered all throughout Spain. So two weeks at one place and we had transferred to another. So it'd be across Spain, we'd have to pay for that transportation since we never stayed in Airbnb longer than 16 days in Spain, we never got the long-term value. So the two main places that we stayed were Valencia and Barcelona. We stayed 16 days at each place. Both of those cost $600. So half that, a month. Yeah. That two weeks was about the same as what we typically pay for a month. And the transportation that it took to get us back and forth across Spain, it really ate into our budget and we exceeded our budget because one of the workaways we did in Spain, Southern Spain, was was so hard. Well uh, and it was in an isolated mountain town. <laughs> that so we, we rewarded ourselves by going to Rhonda uh, on our two days off every week we would go to a different place. Rhonda, uh, Malaga, uh, Cordoba, Sevilla yeah. So we left like every weekend we could, and that was costing some money. This is like the one one workaway where there was no access to um, easy access to mass transportation, and the town itself had nothing. It was a tiny little town, and the house we were at was a mile uh, hike from the downtown. <laughs> we got a workout. <laughs> so, just to go into a little bit about what workaway is. 
it's international. You can do it in the United States, you can do it overseas, almost any country. And you have to apply for the website. I think you pay a minimal yeah. fee. And you look for uh, jobs where generally it's like this. Five days a week, five hours a day. You work for the people. And it could be some of them are babysitting. Some of them were taking care of a ranch. Uh, we did a language class. Uh, it could be painting somebody's barn or helping them with their um, uh, Airbnb. And during that time, they give you room and board. So they feed you three meals a day, generally. And uh, you have access to their house. And oftentimes, they do this because they want to get to know foreigners. And so it seemed like such a great idea. Somebody paying, and, and but you stay there for seven days. I mean, you're there the whole time. So they're paying all those days. And then on your hours off, it's only five hours a day, and your days off, two days a week, you can do what you want to do. And it sounded so good, and especially when Wendy heard about this uh, thatched cottage, which was a 400-year-old hotel that uh, the, these guys were running, and you could stay at the cottage and then help them with running the cottage in the southern England, and it was in a national park where horses roamed wild. And it was just absolutely uh, the idea... <laughs> was wonderful. Yeah. But so we thought we'd save a lot of money. And as Wendy said, when we came to that one isolated place, it was hard work. The lady owned a nice house, uh, what, seven bedrooms or oh, five bedrooms? Gigantic. Yeah, but it had run down. And so she needed us to clear the yard and the backyard. And um, it sounds like a small amount, but it, Wendy and I worked Hard. It was a lot of work, though we have to say we really were re rewarded by you know the work we did there, yeah. and the fact that we did get to run off <laughs> on our days off to these amazing. We saw places. more of Spain than we would have. Yeah. What was your experience with Airbnbs and hotels you stayed? Was it good or bad? For our month-long stays, we took the whole house, and that was a requirement. Um, we wanted the whole house for ourselves. We had to have. Um, and these are things you can pick on Airbnb. We wanted to have Wi-Fi. We wanted to be close transportation, um, washer and dryer, and uh, a kitchen. Washer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no dryers really. <laughs> and, a, and a fitted kitchen, yeah. Although we did have one place that went so little as to just have a hot plate, but we still managed to get by with yeah, that. Yeah, but I, I can't say we had any bad experiences. I think that mm -hmm. one was probably worse than one you just said. Um, but the location. The location was amazing. So I mean- It's it, downtown it, Valencia. It, it really um, offset. I mean, we did. We had one small window and we looked yeah. at the pictures beforehand and actually thought that and, and touched base with the Airbnb host. And they were like, oh yes, there's windows. <laughs> And there was the one little window we saw in the picture. Yeah, we were in a basement, and the window is one of those casement windows at the very top there. So, I mean, unless you're up on a ladder, you know, looking out the window, and all you're looking in is to the walls of the basement. But the location was incredible. Um, so I, I can't even complain with, with that, to be honest. So uh, we stayed in some incredible Airbnbs at in Cyprus, I mean, <laughs> we were there Value in season, for your money. but you know, that was a place where we paid like $400 a month. Oh my goodness. And again, all of our utilities are included in this amount. And we stayed, we had and a in Pescara. wonderful views of the oh ocean in both places. Mm -hmm. Um, great balconies. In fact, one was, they called it a penthouse and it had this incredible, I mean, we could have had a party on this. Yeah. this upper I mean, it was big enough. You could have put crazy. a pool table and a separate ping pong table and still had room for <laughs> it partying. Was, it was, I mean, it was just enormous. Yeah. Another nice thing about Airbnb is you have the host to lean on. So th what I mean is they're going to give you tips um, a lot of times in, in the house, they'll have a little welcome package and yeah. like here, here are restaurants we think that are great and, you know, Brochures we recommend and seeing this and, place yeah. and here's a map. And, yeah. um, so, and if you have an issue, um, and we did this uh, several times, like, you know, when we first got to Spain, we don't know how to get out of the train station and our, yeah. our Airbnb host, um, through, through text was able to actually get us out because it was beyond our abilities. 
and we had um, somebody in Italy contact. We were leaving very early in the morning and we were afraid to, to call the, the taxi ourselves. Um, so they called and, and got a taxi to come for us. Also, about half of our Airbnb host picked us up or yeah. took us to the train station. So, I mean, they're very, very accommodating. You get a lot more bang for your buck, I'll say. And we had, we even even uh, we even had dinner with two of our hosts yeah. who invited us over for a like yeah, that. and that was really nice. One was a span a, a Spanish man and his wife, and uh, the other was an Englishman in uh, Italy, yeah. who was our Airbnb host. And that was kind of special. Well, thanks for stopping by and giving a listen. And we look forward to getting out our next video.